wonderful people welcome back to my channel the teacher's best friend and in today's episode i'm going to share with you a different approach on classroom management and it's called revolutionize classroom management and this is uh, taken from the concept of belonging and how to manage the classroom by uh, Laurie Barron and Patty Kinney. And these are the people who published the book um, through ASCD, okay? So the secret of having a successful classroom management is to make sure there is a sense of belonging with our students. If they feel like that they belong in your classroom and that they are, um, cared for, they will do whatever it takes to please you and to cooperate in the classroom. So the secret here is the sense of belonging. So how to make belonging thrive in the classroom? And there are several approach. I'm going to uh, tell them to you and then I explain and give example later. So first one is teacher must believe and prepare. Second is build a trusting relationship. Third, ensure safety. And fourth, maintain consistency. And the fifth one is we need to promote social and emotional competence in the classroom. Number six, there must be a student-centered instruction. And the last one is students must work together. So let's start with number one. First, secret of building sense of belonging in the classroom is teacher must believe and prepare. If a teacher does not believe in her students or if the teacher does not believe that um, her class will not be uh, successful, then um, she's going to have a hard time or is going to have a hard time making the class uh, cooperate or be successful in whatever they will uh, do in the classroom. So first secret is the teacher must believe with the students, must believe that the students are good, must believe that the students can learn and must believe that the students could work together and have trust to one another. So the first strategy on, on this uh, area is the teacher must reflect on the concept of sense of belonging. So what do we mean by that? We need to understand that these students, even the little kids in the elementary or middle school or high school, when they come to your class, they wanted to belong right away. They don't want to feel that they are excluded. So we need to understand the different concept of the sense of belonging. Belonging in a sense of uh, participating in the class, that you have a trusting relationship with them, you give them responsibilities, you give them duties, you recognize their success in their classroom, whatever they do, whether it's a small project or a big project, you need to recognize those and make the students feel that they do something in your class, that they belong in your class and they don't just count or uh, you, you don't treat them like a number, okay? And then um, teacher must celebrate belonging practices. And how can you um, demonstrate that? Like for example, you are uh, doing a small group instructions and you're uh, grouping kids, uh, let's say by four or by five, and you see your students working together and not uh, excluding anyone. They give opportunity to each member to say something, to participate, to uh, give their opinion or ideas. So teacher must recognize those little things that they need to celebrate the sense of belonging or the belonging practices that is happening in the classroom. And then don't forget also to incorporate classroom management 
that enhance belonging. And as I have mentioned, usually group work can enhance a sense of belonging, um, encouraging your students to incorporate uh, like community service or um, things that they can do to help community or the school community or the students in the other classroom. So things like that can enhance sense of belonging. And of course, don't forget that you need to practice the sense of belonging from day one to have consistency. And the second one is build a trusting relationship. So the secret of a successful classroom management is to have a build a trust relationship between the teacher and the student. If the student do not trust the teacher, they will not open up, they will not cooperate. And the, their tendency is to you know, be a, a rebel or do the opposite of what you're telling them. So the first uh, and foremost that you need to build in your classroom is a trusting relationship. Make sure it's authentic. Make sure that the students trust you and you in return, you need to trust your students. So how are we going to do that? We need to get to know our students. Um, have some activities like uh, games wherein uh, students can communicate their interests, share it to one another, what are their favorite um, weekend activities, what are their favorite sports, colors, music, and all that. So we need to get to know our students. Is the student uh, outgoing or introvert? things like that, because you do not also force a student who is kind of introvert. They enjoy just listening and being quiet and other kids are the opposite. So we need to get to know our students. And at the same time, let the students get to know you as well as a teacher. Do you know that uh, students who knows their teachers are kind of happy like sometimes they feel like you know my teacher uh likes to eat uh let's say this kind of noodles my teacher's favorite song is also my favorite song uh, my teacher's uh, favorite uh basketball superstar is also my favorite superstar so things like that allow your students to get to know you even with simple things because those little things matters to them help the students get to know one another as well so it's it's like all of you students teachers and everyone should get to know each other have to you have to have some activities wherein students uh, have time uh, for conversation on sharing their ideas their thoughts their interests, their hobbies, and so on. And inspire class cohesiveness. Encourage students to work together and understand each other's differences and respect each other. And strengthen bonds with students' families as well. It is important that teachers communicate to parents, like sometimes, the tendency of the teachers is to call the parents when a student misbehave in the classroom or the student uh, did not uh, submit lesson or fail the class. It's good that teachers must call the parents with good news, you know, like not only when there's a problem, but when there are success stories. So in that way, the students will also um, get motivated to perform better because you are communicating their success, their performance, good behavior to the families. And having those conversation with families will also um, build trust, not only with the students, but with parents. 
The third one is ensure safety. So kids will not feel um, comfortable in your class or they don't feel the sense of belonging if they don't feel that they are safe in your class. So you have to review with your students safety procedures. Like for example, in case of uh, some emergencies, they should know what to do. You should practice some fire drills. Where should they exit? Where will they go? And things like that. And uh, you can assign leaders to be, um, you know, have give the direction. So they have to feel that they are safe in your class. Ensure that everyone feels safe and ensure that everyone is seen and heard. Because when a student is not existing, like no one recognizes that particular student, no one sees what he's doing, no one hears what he's saying, and, and that is not a good sign. The student does not feel safe. He feels threatened because no one sees him or her. And the fourth one is maintain consistency. What are the strategies to maintain consistency? So you have to treat consistency as a right. It means it's, it cannot be like you are consistent with one day and the other day not. You are doing this with one student and not to the other student, okay? Teach procedures and protocols like when you come in the morning, when students come in the morning, they should know what to do. They know that they will greet their teacher, they will greet their, their classmates, they will sit on their chair and they can start doing some of your bell work. Bell work is like uh, something that they can do while waiting for the regular class schedule, okay? You have to establish procedures and protocols. So what is the procedure if they wanted to go to the restroom? What is the procedure if they wanted to go to the library to borrow some books? So they should learn. And don't forget to always give clear and concise directions. And um, it is important to post your daily agenda. Like there is a, a bulletin board or one corner of your board that says, from eight o'clock, especially if you are in the self-contained class, from eight o'clock to nine o'clock, this is our activity, so, and so on and so forth, so that they know, they'll be guided what's next, and there are no surprises. So you need to post your daily agenda or your schedule for the day, or even for the week. And number five, promote social and emotional competence teach skills that promote belonging. Like kids or students should learn how to be concerned of their fellow students. If one is feeling sad, maybe um, they can ask question, how are you today? Do you need help? Things like that. You have to have those a sense of belonging and promote sense of belonging in your classroom. And always listen carefully and actively to your individual students. But sometimes kids will talk to you and you know you are busy checking papers, you are busy doing um, whatever assignments uh, you need to finish. But when a student go to your desk and will say something, you need to pay attention, look at them on the face, look at them on the eyes and listen. Listen carefully and actively. And uh, it is also important to teach your students the skills of decision making. Like if there is a conflict or problem in the classroom or among themselves, they have to learn how to talk it out in a nice way or how to problem solve. And they also need to value the different perspective because not everyone have the same opinion. Not everyone have the same ideas, but everyone deserve to be heard, okay? 
and practice conflict resolution. There's always conflict among students, but um, teaching them the skills on how to resolve their conflict without resorting to a fight or a bullying, those are good strategies so that every student will, will be uh, safe or will have a sense of belonging in your classroom. Number six, always have a student-centered instruction. Because sometimes, you know, kids misbehave. They, the students misbehave for a reason. For, there are reasons. They don't misbehave just because of nothing. Sometimes students, they misbehave because they are bored already in your classroom. They don't like the activities or maybe they know that already, they learned that already. Or sometimes it is too difficult for them. Maybe your, your lesson is too difficult for one student and maybe too easy for the other. So the secret there is we need to know how to differentiate our lesson. Like with the same concept, you have to approach each individual student with different strategies. So if your lesson is not student-centered, the tendency is kids will not pay attention. They will focus on their own activities, not to your lesson, okay? So always remember to have dynamic instruction differentiate. You have to put surprises in your class every day. Don't be so predictable because sometimes kids, when you enter the classroom, let's say in a science class, they know already what you will do. Okay, um, get your book, open on page 20, let's do the exercises. So those are some predictable. Have some fun activities and make your classroom dynamic so that students will um, be motivated and excited to come to your class because there's always something new. There's always fun activities to do. And teach students to assess their own learning. Like, they have to have an evaluation of themselves. Like for example, you're doing um, algebra and um, Peter is struggling with your algebra class. And you have to teach Peter how to assess her own learning. What are you struggling with? Is it, is it on um, finding the formula or things like that. So they have to know their, their difficulties. They have to know their strengths and weaknesses so that they know how to assess themselves. And they will also know when to ask for help. And honor students' voice and nurture students' choice. So when you set classroom rules, don't be so rigid you have to have sense of choice or responsibilities for your students. Like for example, um, one uh, classroom rule or procedure that you can do is, let's say the, the students are doing their uh, seat works and, uh, or an essay. The procedure is once you're done, you have two choices. You can either go to the reading corner and read books, or you go to the computer corner and uh, make a research on our topic. So things like that, they have to have some choices, not just like do this, do that. And some students, they don't wanna do it because that's not what they wanna do at that time. So give them choices and listen to them as well and give feedback that makes a difference. So be objective with your feedback, not, not too general, like very good, very good for what? You can say, um, Peter, I like the way you wrote your essay. You were able to write a um, paragraph 
and um, the sentences are complete and you use um, good adjectives and different um, action verbs, things like that. So you have to have feedback where students understand what you are giving feedback for, not just very good, good job or things like that. Be specific. Why are they good job? Why are they very good? And number seven, students working together. So um, they have to have this uh, sense of collaboration, okay? They have to learn how to work together. And in order to be successful in working as a team or working as a group, the teacher must develop a protocol for collaboration. Like for example, if you are doing a group work, let's say um, one group of five students, they should know that once you are going to your groupings, they have to have roles, like who is going to be the recorder for today, who is going to take uh, notes, who is going to be the timekeeper, things like that, okay? So there must be a protocol for collaboration and um, teach them how to solve the problem together, teach them strategies, and make group work reflection a habit. So after they work together, you have to encourage your students to talk it out, like what is the best uh, area that they did for like their group activities, and what is the area that needs improvement so teach them how to reflect so it will become a habit. So the next time they uh, group together or work with a project, they know already the areas that they need to improve. And of course, uh, you always uh, celebrate group belonging. Like every time your students uh, exhibit that sense of cooperation, good collaboration or belonging, always celebrate, always acknowledge so that uh, it will be reinforced. So I just wanted to um, share with you that these strategies are important in order for you to minimize classroom behavior in the classroom, okay? So uh, student behavior in the classroom. So students misbehave for reasons. They do not misbehave just because they just wanted to misbehave. There are so many reasons why students misbehave. They do not feel that they don't feel that they belong. They feel um, unsafe in your class. They are not heard. They don't uh, have um, friends or you know people who can hear and share their stories and things like that. And one important thing that you should always remember is building a trusting relationship with your students and with families. So remember, building relationship matter. If you did not build that relationship, it is going to be very difficult to reach out to your students. Even if you talk to them, they will not listen to you and you won't matter to them as well. So building trusting relationship and make your students feel that sense of belonging in your class. That is the secret of a revolutionized classroom management. So I hope you learned uh, from my episode. And if you have questions or comments, please don't forget to write them or email me at the teacher's best friend at gmail.com, okay? So um, thank you for watching and I hope um, you will continue to watch my videos. And if you haven't subscribed, this is your first time, you can click the subscribe button and comment. So, and check also my other videos. Uh, they might be helpful in your uh, professional development. So thank you for now and bye.